All Stars is going to be in Paris this year. Bonjour Paris. The All Star event is pretty much like every region coming together. I love competing against the best players. I don't care where they're from. So going to Paris would be like, whoa, like I'm in like this alien place. All Stars would be the like the perfect place to prove how good I am. Pick me. Pick me. Vote for me. Last year's All Stars was epic. I need to be a part of that. I need your help to get there. We need your votes. Vote today at lolesports.com. So make sure your favorites are represented. I want to go to showcase one of NA's best. It'd be a really big honor to go, and I'd be so excited, and I'd be so down. I was born and raised here. I want to represent. I really want to go to Paris, dude. That'd be sick. Welcome back to the final day of the North American LCS. Up next, we've got Evil Geniuses versus Team Curse. And for EG, a win here could give them some breathing room in their hunt for seventh place. Yeah, if they were to take this match, it would mean they could still lose to XTG and then tie in the standings, giving them another chance. So this is still important, even though the game later in the day is even more so. All right, but right now, that's easier said than done. And Evil Geniuses are coming into this game now with an eight-game losing streak. It's been really tough for EG. At the start of the year, Evil Genius's strength was really their strategic play, and if they got a small lead in the early game, they would close it out. But now, even their strategic play has been faltering. They really don't have the anything going for them, and they need a complete turnaround. Right, and we have to remember with Diggs' loss in our last game, Curse can secure fourth seed with a win here. Yeah, and Curse has been looking stronger in the past few weeks, even taking down third place CLG yesterday. Quas in particular, has really been stepping it up. He's been making a huge impact for his team, especially with his Renekton, he has a marked improvement on that champion since the start of the season, where he wasn't as good at it. And let's check out the starting lineups as we get right into this game. On the blue side, it's Evil Geniuses. In the top lane is Inox, Snoopy in the jungle, Pobelter in mid, Yellow Pete at 80 carry, and Crepo giving a good chuckle on support. And on the red side, it is Curse. Quas on the top lane, I will dominate in the jungle, Void Boy in mid, Cop on 80 carry, and Bunny Fufu and maybe Thresh on support. So what? It, can EG do to kind of get things yeah. going in this game? Kind of just off the bat. We know Pole Belter can be a factor there, but mm -hmm. what if it's in the side lanes? What if it has to do with something with the jungle? Exactly. Well, early on in the year, they had success with some fringe picks. The Urgot Sorok right, in the right. bottom lane was very strong. You know, Pole Belter also, I feel like, was playing better in the start of the season. Uh, as far as getting going in this one, mm -hmm. uh, try, try something strategic. Their invades, when people weren't invading, were very strong. Uh, and they should try to get back to that. I mean, just looking at the way CLG won last game, even though CLG is great individual players, they won that game as a team with rotations. Yeah. EG, if, if they could pull off something like that, not that it's easy or anything, it would be one of their best chances. That was easier said than done, as we just stated. And we'll see how they put things into action now that they're into picks and bans. A lot comes out of this. EG would definitely benefit a lot out of getting priority picks here. Every team does, but it would make the lanes that much more comfortable for them, and it's necessary. Mm. It's always important to take the opponent out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Inox likes playing a diverse set of top laners, and Renekton is kind of the man who hates diversity in the top lane. Mm. He shuts out a lot of options up there, so getting that ban out of the way means Inox's pool opens up much wider. Dominate also has been playing quite a bit of a lease, which relieves pressure off really having to find something to play in the jungle. He's happy to go back to that. A lot of junglers have kind of gone away, trying to get more on Kha'Zix, who just got banned out. A lot of Lee Sin play, like we said, being a first pick around around these uh, these parts. These parts gets banned away, though, because Inox yeah. is definitely his best champion in the top lane. Thresh is banned away for Bunny Fufu. It's interesting because Krepo's Thresh is really good, but... Uh, EG doesn't want to be forced into first picking it, therefore they have to ban it. Oh boy, getting Lulu is huge. That's going to be huge. nice for Pole Belter. This is the unnerfed Lulu. Yeah. It's been nerfed heavily on the 4.5 patch, but this 4.4 patch is a very strong beast. You can see a 70% win rate in the North American LCS for Lulu. The lock and lock in, not really even thinking about it too long. Bing Got bang. the Nidalee and the Elise. Yeah. The Elise is one of I Will Dominate's favorites, mm -hmm. although I haven't seen too much success from Elise since the nerfs. She still provides a lot of utility, but it definitely hasn't been as overpowering as it was before. Yep. Nidalee, on the other hand, seems just as good as ever, and I actually think it's one of the better picks against Lulu, because while Lulu can shield a lot, Nidalee never has to commit. 
and it's very hard to reactively shield a Nidalee Spear. Therefore, Nid can get a lot of damage off in the face of Lulu. We saw Link using it to great effect last game. Now in the hands of Boy Boy as we match up in our second game here in the last day of Super Week. Could be Illusion and Leona lock in. Crepo very well known for his Leona and Yellow P. He's kind of been going back and forth to a lot of 80 carries this season. Hasn't really picked one to be his mm. kind of main go-to. Caitlyn's been up there. His Varus has actually been played quite well. Yeah. Really hasn't gone back to that yet. Only here and there. It's been an off year mm -hmm. for the whole team, to be fair. Yeah. But... Yellow Pete in particular has not shined. It all started when Snoopy stole his pentacle. That's when it, the downhill downhill started. He reached his high <laughs> moment. He was going to have the only pinch in the NALCS. Love from the crowd. They want to see the little guy. Looks like it could be the Morgan mm -hmm. Caitlin pick. More safety here. Obviously, the poke comp from Curse. It's a game where they can work the strategy once again. And like you said, not have to commit. Yeah, and the Morgana in the poke composition is actually a very important tool for them. Uh, it will stop long-range Leon initiations from isolating priority targets, as long as Bunny Fufu's black shields are completely on point. Uh, I expected actually more teams to be picking Morgana in poke compositions because of that fact. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a early way to help people out of Solar Flare real yeah. fast until you can get your Mikhail's Crucible, and then you're good to go. The lock-ins are that safe Morgana, Caitlyn Lane against Lucian and Leona. I mean, think we'll see too much 2v1 swapping in this one, but we will find out very fast in the early part of the game. Could be a Pantheon for Snoopy. His Pantheons were not too bad. The ganks were actually quite good. It's just the team following up after that was always a little lackluster. Yeah. Pantheon ultimates actually haven't been that on point in the LCS. Teams have been very good at avoiding it. Once you get they used could, to it. Yeah. If they could dump enough damage down, they'll be able to bypass some of that black shield, but it's still gonna still gonna stop the stuns coming through. Wow. Top lane rise, perhaps? So this is different. They're kind of looking at a, a full poke composition, but they haven't given themselves too much to get in and, and engage mm. on that composition. Yeah, the, the they do have Hard engage, mm -hmm. but how do they get past the black shield is going to be the real question. EG will have to work around and initiate onto multiple targets so that they can at least lock down one. It actually makes the initiation fairly difficult. But as far as actually having engaging opportunities mm -hmm. and engaging skills, the move speed provided by Lulu, Rune Prison, Pantheon in general, Leon in general, are all very good at locking people down. So it's not like they can't initiate. It's just going to be very difficult. Like curse that last pickup for Void Boy in the mid lane. If, actually, that's going to is Nidalee. So Quas in the top lane is saved out on this one. Could be. Could be. Could be a top lane. Yeah, Trundle for Quas. Split pusher and also poke supporter. Very similar actually to the CLG composition yeah. we just saw. With Very Nidalee true. plus Trundle as far as the solo lanes go. Caitlyn would be your replacement for the. Lucian. Some people would actually argue that it is better in a poke composition to have Caitlyn. Hmm. All right, then. So poke comp. Poke comp indeed locked in. It's what people are kind of favoring now as we get into this game where you get that surge of money and then everything needs to slow down anyways. Yeah, we have seen a lot save. of poke in the North American LCS. League of Legends has been trending towards that actually uh, for quite a while. Just the longer range initiations to bypass people's ability to kind of counteract what you're doing to them. Mm -hmm. If you're always dealing damage to them outside of their initiation range, you're winning. So it's a lot in Italy because she has such absurd ranges on her stuff. I and speed when you start going towards it. Ranges, damage, and speed. The champs are locked in and loading. So let's take a look at the voting from LOLEsports.com. 68% of you are tipping this one in favor of Curse. Yeah, Curse. Wants to be forever for Yeah. They can do it. It's kind of crazy that it's, yeah. it could happen again. Yeah. This acquisition of Bunny Fufu has worked out very well for them. It did. Sometimes fresh blood is definitely what you need. When it's not something that is expected, though, as mm. EG found out, it kind of puts turmoil in the team. And yeah. I think it was Doublelift kind of saying uh, in a feature we have that, you know, once that happens, it's hard for a team to really figure out where the place was because you exactly. have to repair what happened during that loss yeah. time. So especially for evil geniuses, you know, they weren't having the best of seasons when they had to lose 
three of their starters for two weeks yeah. over for visa issues. Uh, and the adjustment time back and forth is, is just so punishing for a team because they have a synergy that is starting to be developed, and then you break it just for a few weeks, mm -hmm. and then you try to go back, and you're never at the same point. You're always kind of starting from scratch again and again, and that's happened three times now for Evil Geniuses this year. Well, we'll see what these teams have for each other as they do get onto the rift. Now we're into our next game. It's going to be a big one. We got Curse versus Evil Geniuses as Curse is trying to solidify that fourth place. You can see the herd is in place. They're going to be helping out, giving some supports to the cheer, or cheers to the supports. What do these two teams have for each other? Level one, Inox heading mm -hmm. towards the bottom lane. Let me get the 2v1 swap. But well, they may equal it out if they decide. Welcome He's going to be hugged by Yellow Pete, so nothing crazy yet. Just a late invade, it looks like. Yeah, EG starts with the Relic Shield on Krepo and the extra ward. Whereas Bunny Fufu started with the ward as well. He's already placed it. These guys trying to see if anything fancy is up. At this point, the standard level one is the lane swap mm -hmm. so far in this that's Super true. League. So that's where teams are stacking up, and neither team is really trying to take advantage of that fact. They're both just opting into the standard. Although, if a team would have ran, if EG, for instance, would have ran all the way up into that top lane brush, they would be able to catch curses they tried to walk through, but that is not, not the way things have been done. And Ox with the crystal start for himself in the top lane. We'll have to see, actually, if the going to be Curse on the red side if they decide to go to Dragon if this 2v1 does play out. If they actually... We're watching that CLG game and not warming themselves up, getting ready for it. CLG got both top turrets and then pushed over to Dragon and they were able to take that for themselves. After a while, it was just really the map control it gave. Dragon didn't go down for the next few minutes after that, but the game being controlled after the 2v1 was different. We'll have to see if Curse will be able to do that against Evil Geniuses. Well, the invades begin, yeah. and so does the game. Evil Genius is doing something a little interesting, actually. You can see Snoopy is at his own red buff, but Krepo and Yellowpoon hmm. were actually just uh, trying to stop the blue, and then they didn't take it themselves. So uh, I imagine that'll just, I'll just tell them where the start is, and Snoopy will be able to go up and take that blue buff himself. They definitely still put priority on Cops level 2. Bunny Fufu is going to help. Quas get a little bit of movement through the jungle on that white since he yeah. does do quite a bit of damage early. It's just the ordering of the jungle starts is uh, backwards here. Dominate decided to start in the enemy buff and then go to his safe one, mm -hmm. whereas Snoopy has done the opposite. It will not make much of an impact in the long run, though. Tele Quas teleports actually to a second tier in the bottom lane to get himself in to stop he's gonna try this and jungle soak up. Snoopy doesn't necessarily have smite up right now, so he's got to wait a little while. Uh, and he's actually going to require support help to safely secure this one. Yeah, Quaz is already starting to back off, but the team gets a ping on it. They're letting Krepo know where he is and if they want to put more pressure onto it. A good push in the bottom lane by Yellow Pete. We get the Ooh. teleport there from Inox as we do have Dominate approaching yep. top lane. This means it's a four-man push, not the three-man push. Quaz has already burned his teleport, so EG has the potential yep. to push this much faster. This was that four-man push you were talking about in the Challenger series where they went all the way to the inhibitor turret. Not being on the top lane is going to give them that speed and damage on the turret. Good pressure from Pole Belter in the mid lane, so Void Boy really has nowhere to go either. He's pushed up against the turret. EG making some good moves here. Turret way faster than the top. Four level twos pushing that lane. Uh, if Curse does not respond to this, it could actually end up in an inhibitor turret for EG. So Curse has got to make up their mind what they want to do here. They might just have to take the one turret defeat uh, and cut their losses once they get that turret get back to base. But we'll see what they decide to do, whether it's continue pushing or go back to base. Quas's teleport to that second tier turret's gonna slow him down getting to that position. He does have to back all the way and it looks like this turret's about down to half HP as they're getting good damage on it. Still four of them whacking away. Nothing's gonna happen and no rotation from Curse because it can't. I mean, I really feel like unless e Curse sends a second defender, uh, EG could continue this push, but they actually are uh, waiting for the minions, slowing this push down just a little bit. They want to get a big minion stack if they're going to take their run at the inhibitor turret. Curse, pushing pretty quick. Top lane gets a siege. Going to stop him for a little bit, but bottom lane is going to have that siege coming up. If EG doesn't get it on this wave, it will be the next one easily. Up to that inhibitor turret as well. Mid lane, like we was just talking about, a little bit of the CS there to make sure we know what's going on in the island since top and bottom are the focus right now. 
Yeah, EG decides not to push quickly despite having four people in the lane. Uh, and it ends up being an even trade. Now it's just all about the counter rotations from Curse. I feel like EG didn't take as big an advantage of that four-man stack as they could have. Even so, they end up just trading. Standard start. Cobalter has to be pretty careful in that situation. Get themselves out. Doesn't have too many wards to keep himself safe, but they do have to worry about now Cop in the top lane. He's kind of just been going on by himself. Has not backed yet. Looks like he may do that for himself to finally get a buy on. 28 to 27. Everybody comes out of that actually pretty equal, and there's no move for the Dragon this time. Yeah, they're they're rather low. Both these teams actually put a very high importance on early game Dragons. Snoopy, though. Flash for flash. Had to be done. Right there, that's going to harm Snoopy's ability to gank especially. The flash gank from Pantheon is one of his best assets, and Pobelter continues to harass down Boy Boy. He just stood there seeing that Boy Boy has no mana. He's being a bully. Something really key is even though blue buffs have been taken by both sides, uh, neither of the blue buff camps have been cleared, which means this Nidalee Lulu matchup, two of the most blue reliant mm -hmm. mid laners, are going to be substantially delayed on their access to blue buff. Dominate just cleared his blue. That means it'll be up at around 11 minutes, and EG is still not cleared their small golems. You're gonna be rough. Snoopy has been spending a lot of time in the other half of the jungle, so he's really had nothing to uh, get over there and tell him that that needs to be cleared. Six minutes in, Inox returns to the top lane. His teleport is down right now, so he's gonna be just staying up there trying to farm it out. Dragon may have to be the long walk for these top laners. Not for Iquas, though, actually. Check out the little guy. Finally, got it down. 11.30 Yeah. That's when that blue is going to be up again. We'll see if that affects any of the siege pressure. It could happen in these lanes. I was going to say Dominate not back and just Whoa. yet the Zenith Blade pulls him out of range for the Cocoon to safety, but then a little bit of trouble. They're all right yeah. in the outcome. Took a fair bit of damage from that. Yeah. Unfortunately. Lane's still just trying to shove. AD carries matching each other. Cop does get Zenith though. Oh, there's the slow. One, two, after the other. Cop has barrier, Cop has flash. One is used to get himself out safely. In the top lane, we're gonna see a little bit of pressure onto Qua or onto Inox rather. Well, that's Void Boy. God. The Nidalee, not Inox, Void Boy. Nidalee's being everywhere. Oh, Belter <laughs> actually going for a kill. Uh oh! Sticky situation for him. He gets himself behind the turret. The Arden Blaze trying to peel them off, but he can only do auto attack damage after that. Maybe picking himself up a kill, but he could put himself in the death position. Oh, he does put himself in that spot to barrier. die. One more shot. The auto attack. No more caster minions. Throwing him out. They're in the dark fighting. Oh, the auto attack. He miscalculated the damage from the Morgana auto. He did not think that would cause him to have to barrier. Well, at least he still has barrier, but he falls. Uncalculated, if yeah, you will. That was one of the not calculated moves. Two to two now in kills as kind of getting the ones just on the edge. Quaz is doing what he can to farm out these minions and stop them from hitting up his turret. Finally turns on to Crepo there to get them off with a bit of damage and harass. He's doing fine in the top lane for a three resource being put up here by EG and their mid's being pushed. Yeah, Quas and Ryze both trying to get the farm on. Uh, we've got to take a look at what happened in this top lane, however. Just a big dive onto Boy Boy obliterated him while that action was happening in the mid lane. Nice kill on Nidalee, but the respawn happened. It's Dragon for Curse. Meanwhile, <laughs> in the top lane. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Quas is going very hard without enough vision in the brush. Goes ahead, quickly uses Subjugate to get himself out safely with a bit more. Curse takes down Dragon, very nice there at 8 and 30 into the game. About a 14 minute Dragon with no knowledge over to EG yeah. on that. Well, though, they had a ward in there. Yeah, they were also completely out of mana mm -hmm. in the top lane, which is why that kill wasn't able to wield any benefits for EG. Nice. About it with the nice geometry work. <laughs> All that high school paying off still. Wow. Enox comes back with mana, but Snoopy still has none, so the lockdown is fleeting. They're getting a lot of kills here. Finally getting damage on the turret. So they can keep their focus on the right thing. Quas is trying to distract while soak up experience. Just letting the rest of the team know what's going down. Snoopy still not level six yet. A little late on the ultimates for him, but now they'll be able to put them into action. Not too much damage from Boy Boy either. Doesn't have too much pen, just the chalice right now. Yeah, this has definitely been one of EG's better games. Mm -hmm. They've been able to stay very close in gold in the early game, and when they've been able to do this in the past, they've actually won a lot of games. 
uh, early on in the season. That's how they got most of their six wins. So a very, very promising start. Right. Knowing that Inox has his Rise items ready to go and start stacking up. Of course, Rod of Ages will be the next thing he wants to complete. They have Lulu, 70% win rate in the North American LCS. Often banned. Uh, in the hands of their best player, I feel like, in Poe Belter. But a pause coming in. A quick mouse issue for Void Boy. We're going to get fixed up. Also, the first back of Wiz Fusion down about 14. Or, yeah, Wiz Fusion. Uh, <laughs> Yellow P, just looking right. at Lucian, is down yeah. about 14 CS right now. But he picked up the BF Sword first, knowing that obviously the passive auto attacks doing damage. The Zerk is over to Caitlyn. Mm. So if they're to match up in a fight, he's still going to have good damage coming out of those caster abilities mm. instead of just the Zerk Grieve auto attacks. Exactly. In this type of game, Caitlyn's most likely going for the Bloodthirst or Last Whisper build. Mm -hmm. uh, very heavy on the long range poke and lane shoving. Uh, maybe a static shift if they wanted the lane shoving faster, but I think it's more about the extended sieges. Right. Also, this should be a very quick pause. Just and unfortunately, he went back and bought a BF sword. So now they both have one. And it's even. <laughs> even Steven. So in this 14.3 to 13.9, not too much of a discrepancy in the mm -hmm. gold there. We saw Curse going for a dragon as they were also kind of formulating towards the top lane and uh, trying to keep everybody alive. And that's where EG's had most of their pressure. Still no Pantheon ganks to come in just yet. We've seen Snoopy hugging a lot of the 2v1 lanes and then mm -hmm. just now the 2v uh, lanes themselves to get a turret pushed. Yeah, and there's that four-man stack right there. EG really prioritizing turrets. Curse getting pushed around a little bit. Not the greatest wave clear. So that's where their main vulnerability lies. EG trying to take advantage of it. One shout out to Yellow Pete. Completely safe though. I'd be very happy if Crepo had that solar flare right now. Definitely have a bit more safety to be pushing onto these turrets. As well, Snoopy will be just on the edge of that quasi-global ultimate of the Grand Skyfall. Returning to bottom lane to clear out Void Boy split push. Quas is going to do some work in the top as well. Curse to, er, is controlling all the lanes right now. And here comes the ultimate from Pantheon. Let's see who the Black Shield decides to protect. And we hear Snoopy in the background screaming out, man, and it's going to be Cop that goes down first. Very nice teleports into the fight as well. EG is just dropping from the sky everywhere. They come out very big with two kills on this. Real big kills for EG right there. The Pantheon ultimate came down just right. They caught multiple people in the same threat zone. So therefore, the Black Shield was ineffective at protecting Curse. They get two kills and a powerful push down this mid lane. That is going to be a turret going down. EG finally opens up the map a bit for themselves with the third turret, the outer turret, I should say, going down. Now the inside wars to be placed. It looks like EG is just going to start trying to take everything they can. Right here, let's take another quick look at this one. Pantheon goes up, comes back down. But the big thing is Inox already had Cop locked down there. They blew through the Black Shield so quickly that it effectively didn't matter. And then they could just chase down Poe Belter. Pixes him to death. Just when you think you're safe. Lulu comes out of the brush. Turret goes down, Curse answers a little bit back onto that. And now only 200 gold separate these teams. Curse is trying to do exactly what EG just did, and they're going to succeed. Yeah. Very nice movement. Mm. I actually feel like EG overcommitted for the blue buff steal there. Uh, because it left their mid turret and their own blue buff. Yeah. Vulnerable means Curse can just go shot for shot, react perfectly to what EG does, and basically make that Pantheon ult uh, not have that big of an impact overall. Shows you the value of rotations. Yeah. With that teleport down and the, the Grand Skyfall, it's definitely a window that Curse has to work with where they don't have to worry about too much. But every time that's up, EG has a chance to get themselves further ahead in this game. Now 100 gold. 4-2 to two and 4-3 to three in turrets with Dragon two minutes away. Snoopy would love to drop down on that fight if he could. Just getting everybody to clear the lanes. Nobody looks like they're fighting right now. All the power's off, just pushing. Yeah. Power's also up, charging away. Mm -hmm. Quas wants to finish his Blade of the Ruined King. I wonder if he's going to stick with the Bilgewater because it still kind of serves his purpose of sustain and get tankier first. Giant's Belt is incredibly good on Trundle because of his ability to steal tank resistances. That would probably be the smart choice for Curse since they don't have a tank per se. And despite being a poke comp, uh, we'll probably end up having to team fight for some of these dragons. Looking around as well, EG really wants that Rod of Ages being completed on Inox right. so he can get powerful as soon as, as soon as possible, really. Some of the latest ones, not latest, but of late, we've seen them finished around 12 or 13 minutes. So with a 10 yeah. minute charge, True. 
around 24 25 minutes fully powered up ready to go that tier is stacking as well he's gonna have a good amount of damage coming on the backside yeah also to follow through with these team fights his tier is currently at 270 out of 750 so rise is mostly on schedule Athene's unholy girl for pole belter is I would say better on Lulu than it is comparably on Nidalee just because the with the blue buff help picks means two glitter lances yeah. and that is massive especially uh, in just breaking black shields at this point because uh, Bunny Fufu obviously maxes Dark Binding on Morgana as everyone does but black shield even with his ability power shields 100 magic damage right. once they can get 100 magic damage down all the crowd control of Leona and Rise and the slows from Lulu and Pantheon all work again and that's just one Glitter Lance tick completely mm. negates it, or one Rise spell. It's very important, actually, that Inox is powerful so he can get it at the start of fights, blow through a Black Shield, and then enable the rest of their crowd control to hard initiate. Well, perfect job for somebody that wants to be directly in the middle of the fight, trying to shut down everybody that's getting towards the AD carry and the rest of the squishies. EG waiting on the edge as both teams testing each other on Baron positioning here. Curse. Both and EG have Inox and Quas ready to teleport from the top side. Nearly spears are critical right now. As well, if EG gets hit by a couple, they would have to give up dragon positioning, but if they continue to dodge them, the sheer force of their team fight ability would grant them a dragon. So, so far so good. Haven't got hit by a spear yet. Oh, great bushwhacks going down as well. Crepo stepping on one kind of causes them to totally reposition there. They don't like the vision that was given away. But they still will not let this dragon go. Very good positioning by EG. Forward. Pushes out Curse, and they're going to start it. Blocked all the spears, or dodged all the spears. Got the war control, and it means they can just secure this down. And the teleport actually comes in. If they can get an initiation, this could be great for EG. Inox looks to go over to Void Boy. The shield goes on, and he can't lock anybody down with Rune Prison. They're forced to go for Quas. That means it's free Rome coming out here. Inox still trying to machine gun out the DPS. Krepo's on the backside. EG has taken a lot of damage here and now able to reassess the fight. But Curse was already on the backside doing that from the beginning. Void Boy now to move in. He has Javelin health bars in his eyes, and it looks like Inox is going to put down the Rune. Damage. He throws it out, and Inox goes for the side. Staff. EG committed heavily in that fight for Bunny Poofo and it almost cost them, but then with everyone at a sliver, you could see Curse's poke comp. They tried to play it like a dive comp and it backfired. Mm. Void Boy cannot dive in those situations anymore. That's two deaths on Italy. Too many more than he needs. Uh, still Cop trying to get an advantage out of this. They lost two over to that one of Pole Belter. And we'll just see how this yeah. fight came about. It split up entirely. So one thing was the Pantheon ult, which zoned Curse back. But then also Bunny Fufu's ultimate ult, Morgana, was really good at keeping the fight isolated. They did get on Bunny Fufu, but because he could flash away with a sliver, the rest of EG kind of had to run away from them. Uh, and they also split up right there. Some in the Dragon Pit, some elsewhere, which is why Curse felt so confident. But as you can see here, Void Boy was all alone trying to chase two, maybe three people of EG and then using his flash to get in yeah. with all the crowd control potential of EG. He just ends up getting locked down. A beautiful spear dodge by Anox at the end. You always rock perpendicular to the flying yeah. skill shot. <laughs> you will dodge it. So goodbye is coming out on both sides with a little bit of gold influx there. Sheen instantly coming out for Pole Belter. Yeah, once that Lich Bane, even though it's nerfed, mm -hmm. Still going to take that diminished ratio and use it to <laughs> auto-attack people down. Put all the pain in the AAs. Let's see, six to three, seven and a half, or 17 and a half. We're going to add a one to that. Minutes into the game, Curse, again, using organized moves to get what they want. And now they're pinching EG in here. Dominate on the other yeah, side. They do have careful. vision of this. Nice Krepo gets the Zenith Blade over the pillar, trying to close the distance to safety. And he is going to nicely get out of that with the LP. A little scary. He's got their dancing shoes on. These skill <laughs> shots are not landing onto them. Krepo with a very sneaky retreat. Ooh. Not even having flash and getting out of that one is just awesome. Krepo dove that one. He said, I got it. Yeah. Good steal out. Or not steal out. Good smite out. Snoopy keeping everything to himself. And the experience to EG on their side of the jungle. But Curris looks to get some forward wards in and also take down these turrets. They're going to be on the second tier. This will be, be one of the last... Here. Grand Skyfall missing out quite good on that one. Pole Belter tries to get the Glitter Lance down. They're busting through the Black Shield with the AD. Not going to help you much there. Pole Belter picking up a kill. Yeah, nice.
Pantheon ult by Snoopy there. His Pantheon ultimates have actually been incredibly strong this game. They are forcing Curse either into fights they don't want mm -hmm. or splitting them up, and EG is able to get the kills afterwards. Fancy work there. Still using that combination, even without the Rise teleport. They're able to just get Inox quite safely to the fight. It looks like with Quaz pushing in the bottom side, Curse could get themselves and or EG rather get themselves an advantage in mid. Yeah, this wasn't even from very far away, but it still did the job of getting him in and splitting up Curse. And then obviously everyone could just chase down Bunny Fufu -Foo because they were yeah. split up because of that Pantheon ult. If Bunny Fufu -Foo would have went through the Pantheon ult, he would have died. If he goes the other way, he gets chased down. Take stock of what's happening in some inventories. Mid lane 153 to 119. Somewhat to be expected. You see Voiboy Boy cleaning up camps as Voiboy Boy was glitter lancing and bullying in lane all day long. 119 to 132 is Cop. We've seen him and Quas doing a lot of side farming. Still doing that yeah. in the top lane for himself. Curse in good position, but so is EG here. Yeah, four turns to four means this game is still quite close. Yeah. Unlike. Uh, a lot of the EG games, they have the 2,000 gold advantage instead of the two or 3,000 gold disadvantage mm -hmm. that they would normally hold at this point. Uh, it also means EG has a tendency of just really forcing team fights at this point in the game. Because it works when they're ahead. It just doesn't work when they're behind. Since they are ahead now, this is actually a very great situation for EG to be in. About 250 stacks off the Seraph's Embrace. About three more minutes for a fully charged Rod of Ages. Yeah. And Ox still getting that point. Got level 11s coming out now. A little more power from Ultimates. Nice catch by Pole Belter. They're starting to hurt. Yeah. Uh, which is a danger EG absolutely has to keep track of. Also thinking about Curse and their, their heavily poke focused composition. I, I still wonder what I, I talked about yesterday during the Curse pregame, which was how Curse goes really far in one direction for team compositions, they'll either go super hard initiate, mm -hmm. like a Vi Yasuo, and just, they pick one target, and they're gonna get to that target. They do not care what you do against it. Or they go like super push heavy. When they did early on in the year against CLG, they did a Jinx Nunu Janna composition. Right. And just shoved down turret super fast. Or this poke composition, which is just all about poke with very limited team fight potential. And I feel like they're actually not that great at poke because their, their true specialty is live and diving. And when they make compositions like this, uh, they become you know, a jack of all trades, but master of none, which yeah. leaves them vulnerable to teams like EG here. Still a nice binding though, stun chain. You can see they're all a little hesitant to go straight into the fight. Bunny Fufu is still trying to retreat out. Snoopy comes in with a grand skyfall, right on to dominate, but it's not enough damage to take him down. He Team gets the heal coming out of Boy Boy. Inox now with the rest of the team as they put out some good damage. It's going to be very nice plays there. Two down on Curse's side, only for the one Akrepo. Goes to show you how powerful EG is in these team fights. With Poke landing, though, it becomes a little bit dangerous. Dragon is secured, however. There's a nice little one-two coming from the Dark Binding Javelin. But EG is not scared off the Dragon. They do that. Four strong. You see Krepo coming out of the base. Face of the Mountain finished off with his Sight Stone. Looks like he's going to get that charged up one more time. A little more HP for himself, so... See how, check out, how this went down. Check out Inox in this fight, because I feel like that's where a lot of the damage mm -hmm. came from. Krepo just gets obliterated right off the bat. His ultimate just slows down Bunny Fufu. -Foo. But then when Inox arrives, he lands so much AoE damage with those bounces. Actually ended up bouncing around and finishing him off, and it just continues uh, after that, really <laughs> blowing up two members of Curse and making them do a full retreat, despite the start of that really beating a 4 for 5 There's a great choice by him, too, on entrance of the fight. He came behind Red Buff instead of the ward that was directly in the fight as to not alert Curse to his presence. So very nice job giving EG the quick edge as they rock around. Now 35,000 to 32. Really great siege clear is going to be coming in here for EG. So they're not too worried once they get to the turrets, and especially if they get the catch they want, we see what happens to Curse. They don't have the disengage they want. Just kind of pushing down mid lane, looking to soak up the rest of that experience. Two kills, most on to Bunny Fufu right now for Curse. Not helping too much. You can see Krepo is getting rather tanky himself. He eats a spear there, but because his Eclipse Shield was up, he didn't take very much damage whatsoever. Uh, Snoopy's really waiting on his Pantheon ultimate, and Curse continually comes back to this mid lane, trying to set up sieges, but there have been multiple team fights initiated on them in this point. 
kind of do or die for Curse, though. If they can't siege up as five with a poke comp, they cannot succeed. But since they're not landing poke and getting EG low before they set up, they're even more vulnerable to the initiations. Snoopy's ultimate will be up soon. A little bit hitting on Inox. Not doing too much damage. Void Boy with the blue buff. That's going to be very big for them in this fight. He can keep throwing out the spears and keep the distance on. We see actually Cops build going for the static shiv. So if the poke comp does need to stay mid, they can get pushed comes. wherever they want. He's a little far ahead this time. Let's Rand see if they can Skyfall make it. Skyfall's gonna land. All they have is Qua. Subjugate goes down, but Wild Growth onto him will pop him up. He denies vision, gets on the other side of the wall. What is EG's next focus? Curse with some pretty good disengage this time, but is it gonna be enough? Daybreak hits Boy Boy as he goes for the leap. It's gonna be the lockdown once again. And the EG follow-up is good enough. The chase is sufficient for EG right there. Curse could not disengage enough because the Lulu and all the rest of them are relentless. Tons of moves speed coming out for EG. Another successful initiation. EG putting the pressure onto Kurth, who, Curse, who is looking for that fourth place. Really having that tick on their mind during this game, but initiations like this are making it tough. This is how confident EG is. They actually initiate onto the tank, and Snoopy eats a bunch, but because they drew attention, Inox was so fast on Rise that he is the one that got locked down. Bo Belter finished him off, and then a flash stun onto Boy Boy. As fast as Nidalee can be, <laughs> EG is faster. I like that Snoopy ate up the trap, but also got his stun off as he went for the, the cast of his yeah, ability. Nice move. Working out well, whether it happened or not. Gets out the kills with his team, and they now take a 6,000 gold lead over Curse in this game. Five turrets to four. EG looks now to continue getting those forward wards out. They've got one down the mid lane, and they've got it now on both sides of mid, which are going to help, especially when Ooh. Curse wants to be taking these fights. Ooh, man. That was a desperation Baron play by Curse. They kind of need to steal a Baron or win a crazy fight to come back into this one. It's just the danger of running this long range poke comp with low team fight potential. You don't get to force objectives like that. Therefore, they have to immediately retreat as soon as EG gets near. As soon as Snoopy got that ultimate, EG definitely started to take control of this game. Really well organized fights. Inox now getting to that full power. Seraph's Embrace finished. The Glacial Shroud begins. He's going to be even more of a problem, but more of Quas to get some stats off of as well. Yeah, Quas could theoretically help Inox go down, but just uh, with the current state of the game and how Quas is somewhat starred of gold because they're so yeah. paranoid of getting initiated on him. The pillar is absolutely required by Quas to help disengage. Uh, he is just trapped between a rock and a hard place right now. He has no realistic way of getting quality farm without his team dying. Snoopy cleaning up all the traps. We've seen him and Crepo soaking up the bushwhacks and the Caitlyn Yordle traps. Yellow P, be very careful here. He does have Snoopy on the side. This could be dangerous. Ace in the hole and a lot to follow up on that. Could definitely mean a quick dead AD carry out of nowhere. One minute on Dragon, EG is kind of posturing here in the mid lane so they can rotate easily for that or make sure Baron is safe. Yeah, I wonder how long until EG tries to go for the Baron. It's a bit of a process here to at least grant uh, enough war control inside the red jungle of Curse. They need to make sure the side lanes are all shoving first and then going for it. But uh, right now, they're pretty content just continuing to do what they've been doing. The no dragon is up in 30 seconds. Now, once EG is able to get the dragon control, they're most likely going to be able to go in and get more ward control and eventually a bear attempt. Well, this would be Inox now to hug towards the bottom lane. He's going to meet up with Cop. That can start to be what EG needs to really gain control. Start to spread Curse a little bit more thin. Usually, Curse has the upper hand in the game at this point, and they're the ones kind of with the chance to lose. Right now, they're trying to get the win back in their hands. A very nice gold lead by EG is being controlled better than we've really seen them play it out before. Their mind's set on this Super Week, and they know what it means in the last place. Chris again trying to force. They do kill it rather quickly, but if they do get engaged on, it would be a disaster. Pantheon's coming in the retreat path of Curse as well. Great placement. They are all walking into it. Snoopy actually takes a few more steps to get on the safety side of his team, but they take him down. Quas is the first to get hit up on this one. They do have some good escape here, but they're going to be chasing out Void Boy. Crepo hooks a fast right and tries to cut off any type of escape path. The heal comes out, and he may save himself, but they get the Glitter Lance on again. 
dominate now with the Black Shield. They're just gonna walk side by side on the beach for this one. He gets himself oh. over to the Golems, now flashes over the wall to safety, but Curse is running scared. They get two for the cost of one right there. Snoopy does get shut down, however, so that is not a disastrous force there by Curse. Uh, they had the positional jump on EG, and even though Snoopy's ultimate was placed very well, the follow-up from the team was greatly delayed. That was almost extremely clever uh, by Curse because they knew the timing of the dragon and they knew how EG was going to be there. So if EG wouldn't have, have ran so quickly, that could have actually been a barren take for Curse. They, they almost, almost caught EG in a pattern. You see the timer is still quite short in this game. No thought about Baron even after wiping the team. They go for Dragon, sure gold, and sure control of the game still. They're not going to put themselves in a scary spot. Already have the lead, and that's what they are trying to work to the nexus of Curse. Like we said, Curse looking to grab fourth here. Really wanting this win. Yeah, but EG. How much would it mean to them if they win this game going into their XGG game at the end? Uh, breaking their losing streak against arguably a stronger opponent they will face at the end of the day would be monstrous for them. Pull Belter on Lulu is starting to take over. 256 yeah. farm, 426. There's a reason that was first pick, quick pick mm -hmm. for Pole Belter. Locking that one in, and then they focused on that. Bottom lane for EG, something that also struggled a little bit. Made sure champions select prioritize where the weak not the weak links it might be, but where the problems have occurred throughout this season. Every lane has actually done their part in the wins for Evil Geniuses. Right now, everybody's doing their part. You can see how much of a more controlled yeah. game it is. Mm -hmm. They play very well with the lead. We've known this for a while. It's just they haven't been able to get leads for themselves, which is why uh, the team's current patterns of all lane swapping at the start of the game really benefit each other. Yeah. Still, I believe, different ways to handle that 2v1. We saw CLG doing it a different way last time. EG kind of just went with the flow and made sure they controlled the warding, vision, and made sure that the mid lanes couldn't do much. Pobalter had good control and still does. 262 to 197 on Voiboy. It's been a large part of the game. We see Voiboy really trying to be a leading player when he yeah. has those leads in the game. Yeah, but not this game. They do no. not have to lead in this game, which is the painful thing for Cursor. The 043 Nidalee having very little impact in this game. Those spears not finding true targets. CG doing a very good job of avoiding them all. Uh, and now we're at that point where they are getting vision control around the Baron and might look to set up more. Look for them to get a few more rotations on their sweepers. And then eventually, maybe even just catch Curse trying to check rather than force it. And because this, they know how well Dominate steals Baron. And is this what almost has to happen? Because how hard is it going to be for them to push into an inhibitor turret with the poke comp? Uh, not extremely hard, actually. But now they're trying to catch Curse checking as they see a ward and some people. Yellow P throws himself right into the fire. He knows he's on the good side. What a side strafe oh, there to they get the color over the wall. Them. It's going to be another one going down. Cop is dead. They now have eyes focused on Boy Boy. He cannot leave the safety. Locked down and taken down. Three kills. Pole Belter's going for Dominate. He gets Cocoon, but it's not going to be enough. He doesn't even need to shield himself as he whimsies back to life and back to Baron. Quas going to do what he can, but they're only really going to get some CS out of this in the lane yep. pushed for the final hit. Just a disastrous attempt of checking Baron Vision right there for Curse. EG, with their initiation, a great flank amongst all this. Watch Quas flash in and steal with a Q. Is he even going to try for it? The one true damage of Pillar. Do it. That's going to be a lot. Oh, they want him right off the bat. He cannot get close enough. Actually uses flash and everything to get out. Teleports down as he was getting back into the game with that one. So we'll see Baron now going over to EG. They definitely played it right. They waited their time. They got the vision. And, and the they surrender. got the right surrender there. out of Curse. 32 minutes into the game. Evil Genius is putting up a great fight for the win. Interestingly enough, this is only the second game all year where a team wins without an inhibitor falling. The other one was an EG loss to TSM, so a very decisive victory there by EG, controlling the vision, showing vast superiority in Team Fight Cox. It's the start of something good, maybe, for Evil Geniuses. They need to carry this momentum through to the final game of the day. You know, I asked you how much they were going to be able to gap close. 
and they waited. They waited very patiently until Snoopy finally got that ultimate, and then it was just one after the other. Snoopy and Inox teleporting in to make the fight a little bit worse yeah. than Man. first thought it was. Just really good champion select for Evil Geniuses there. Inox's rise was incredibly potent. I don't know if the team composition could have worked without Lulu because it really gave them that extra speed to make it into the team fights and shut down the Pokemon. But that is kind of like the EG we saw in the promotion tournament yeah. that had everyone so hyped for playing against them. Like it's, it's a strange transition when EG comes into this because they had looked so bad, to be completely yep. blunt about it. Uh, but Even they, the sister they team. turned it around, yeah. especially against the Chris team, who was looking really good uh, yesterday. Goes to show you the difference that can happen between day to day uh, with players that are as experienced as Evil right. Geniuses, turning it on when it matters most. Yeah, if it did seem that the three out for Visas took a little bit, but that was what we were talking about before the game, getting it back together. They found that spot, and it, it was played amazingly. I don't know how many times Snoopy had more than three people in his alt. It was a yeah. good amount of times. In the last alt we're actually going to bring up, we saw them trying to check Baron will hit this replay again, was just so good yeah, coming Yeah, exactly. In. Well, you could see that Curse was trying to take the safe route towards the Baron to get the ward, uh, but they were just out of sorts. Yeah. Curse tried to collapse onto Snoopy because he looked a little overextended, but they ran past their minion line, which meant, hello, there's a rise behind you and absolutely no escape. They can't run to the left because Poe Belter, they can't run to the right because Inox. Solo lane control from EG and the initiation once again by Snoopy and the bottom lane. It really was a team effort and that prompted the surrender because at that point for Curse, all options were against them. They were in a corner, could not do anything and that means playoff bracket Chris and Dignitas locked in. Indeed, set in stone. Check out this playoff bracket. So much has happened this season. But to yep. now see a lot of people, what was the percentage? That's 80%, I believe, coming in yeah. for Curse to take this game and be solidified in fourth, but not mm -hmm. the case. Dignitas gets the four seed, meaning they will have side choice in that best of three. And then go on to face Cloud9. So a tough road ahead for both those guys, but now at least they're locked in. Absolutely. To see EG play like this, we, we, we saw in the beginning of the day, even if it's not changing too much of a position, the momentum they have coming into these games, knowing right. that they're strong currently with what's happening, it's going to be a big part of how their mentality hits and yeah. start the ground as they go running. Yeah, I wonder how it's going to work for their game against XTG, because I, I'm really reminded by thinking all the way back to the promotion tournament, uh, going into it, they had almost no confidence, right? They were right. losing most of their scrims badly. They were losing to a lot of the challenger teams when they first started. And then like a day before the promotion tournament, something clicked and they started playing amazingly. They yeah. dominated their 3-0 in the promotion tournament to make it into the LCS. And again, since they've been on this long losing streak with all the travel, they might be feeling that again. And a similar turnaround could be in the works. All right, well, remember to share your favorite moments from today by tweeting us at LOL Esports and use the hashtag LCS Big Plays. Right now, we're going to send it over to Freak and Kobe for a first-hand account of EG's big victory. Thank you very much, Riv. What's up, guys? We're joined by Crepo and Snoopy, of course, of Evil Geniuses. Come into that game. Uh, of course, a, a difficult match on paper for you guys, of course, having a, a better season so far. What was your confidence like coming in? Um, I've always considered us having a... a decent fighting chance against like Dignitas and Curse. Uh, I really f still feel that there's a big gap between top three and bottom five in NA. Um, yeah, just recently, like we were really close, but every, every weekend we kept losing and the, the gap kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. Um, we had confidence we could win. Um, not the insane amount of pressure either because the, the match that will matter is only the match against XZG. Regardless of what we do here, we need to win against XZG to like, solidify that seventh place. Yeah. Yeah. This this game did show uh, one big thing that I think you guys have improved on a lot. It looks like you had a much better communication, especially using something like Pantheon Alt, which timing is everything with that. Have you guys done anything specifically to work on that, or did you just finally everything fall into place? Honestly, no. Like The last few weeks for us have just been a bit crazy. Um, with having to use subs, go home and get visas sorted, um, it's just been a little bit crazy. Communication is definitely one of our weakest points right now. You'll notice in the rotations, like we might win the early game. Mm -hmm. but our rotations are really not on point, and that's a lot of it down to communication. And I know actually throughout your season, you guys have actually had a large number of, like, you almost won losses, like a significantly high number of, of like, almost wins. Uh, does that do anything to you guys when you're like, we can almost beat all these top teams? No, uh, I would say that 
it's like it doesn't matter if you don't if you don't win it really doesn't matter um because like for the middle of the season we were we we're having close games against tsm against clg but it really didn't matter because come the end of the season the results aren't there it shows and how many losses we have to wins and we really need to pick up most importantly the game against xdg tomorrow that's the most important one for us, or today sorry yeah sure. later to, later today um is the most important one now and it's kind of sad really considering how close our games were with the top teams yeah that we're now fighting for last spot essentially which is it blows a little bit. Sure. You right, open well, your mouth. I, I, yeah, I want to get to this dragon fight. Okay. Uh, we're talking about their next game already, but let's get, go back to this game and bring up this dragon fight that you guys do have. Uh, walk us through this one, guys. Um, I actually don't quite remember what happened. So, so we're doing a Drake, I imagine. We're bursting it because they don't get in time. I heroically take that bind to prevent it from stealing Drake. And that's just when you like assess the situation, what's going to happen. Pobalter, I think he goes out a little too far. But then we answer with the Pantheon ult, and now it's, it's just up to tar calling targets. I know we've been calling left, left side, people calling Trundle, I'm going on a Morgue. Uh, and it's, it's basically, at this point, it's almost reactive. Like, we try to get the Morgue down, and then just dodge as many skill shots as we can. And right now, um, yeah, we gotta get out. So we just try and survive, and I think we get a little lucky. I think I'm about to flash a Spear here, that ends up hitting Inox, and we get really low. And um, we're this, considering this turn a turn. This we're is the turn is the biggest part. Yeah, we're considering a turn here, but then we decide, like, no, mm -hmm. like, it's too unsafe. But then he flashes in, and he's like, okay, well, let's take a freebie. It wasn't really a freebie. I, Inox, Inox, Inox was Inox very close to work that. For that one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the Nidalee kill that wasn't as, um, <laughs> as important at that point, even if he kills us or we kill him. I think it's really good uh -huh. that we actually got that Drake. We got the Drake control. Mm -hmm. uh, we rushed it when we noticed they couldn't come in. Got a little iffy towards the end, but uh, at least we were somewhat in control. Uh, of this game, yeah, but somewhat sloppy still in a lot of areas, so we gotta make sure that's perfect for XCG later. I think the biggest thing coming into this game is that we picked the Rise top, kind of blind, essentially. Well, it was blind, basically. Um, we just kind of figured that we'd get the Rise against any top laner that Quaz was going to pick. Once we took out the Renekton, we were comfortable with him playing against Shivana or Trundle. So we had a really good matchup between the Trundle and Rise, and even though they never really laned, um, we got the Rise pairing up, which meant it could always split against Trundle later in the game if we had to. Mm -hmm. And then the biggest factor was our initiations. Um, they have a Nidalee poke comp with a disengage from Morgana bindings and then also the Trundle pillar. And we really had to get on point initiations. And the Pantheon drops were like really, really good. We got on their backline, followed up by Leona. And the Lulu ulti saves like on more than one occasion when Lulu yeah. comes in. And I'm expecting that. I'm always calling in the team fight. Like I jump in really, really deep, like deeper than I maybe should. And I'm always calling, where's the loyalty? Where's the loyalty? Yeah, one of the things I was really surprised about is Curse have Caitlyn traps, they have bindings, they have spears, all these things that they can line up at your point of impact as Pantheon. It's so scary to do those deep jumps. Um, but since you had this very scary rise right behind you, it kind of always seemed like Curse were on the panic mode and they didn't try and set up any of those things when you landed and you guys got to go full offensive. Yeah. Um, we actually have a, a clip of one of these really good Pantheon ults that you do super deep. Uh, let's, let's bring this one up on the screen. Uh, oh yeah, this is the one in mid. We're actually waiting on my ulti coming off cooldown. I don't uh -huh. have it quite yet and I'm looking for an opportunity to engage. And I need to wait for them to come so far out. We don't have vision of them, but now I just go. I don't even have vision, I just go for it. And the problem is they all get out of my range. The only option I have is Trundle, so I go on Trundle. You'll notice the burst that comes down on me now, and that's the Lulu ulti comes. I still almost die even with the Lulu ulti on me. Mm -hmm. And then we basically clean up. We chase, we're calling for cop, 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 cop. And I think Trundle dies to ignite or something. Yep, it dies to ignite. Now we look for the follow up on Volleyboy here. Creeple flash stuns, Enoch snares, then I flash stun to follow up as well. And then we got a good pickup on Volleyboy and really came out on top there. Uh, the biggest thing about this composition that the engage uh, it comes in waves. Mm -hmm. So either I go in first and Pantheon follows up, or most of the cases, because as you highlighted, they have Trundle Pillar and yeah. this wall of traps and like mobility and binds mm -hmm. and Black Shield to get out. But Pantheon can literally just bypass that. He just jumps up in the air, lands somewhere, and then the, they can't really stand still to fight him because the second wave of engage is coming, as in like yeah. Leona. Then you have the Lulu knock up, which is CC. And then so you basically you pile on CC one after the other, and they were too far behind and their poke wasn't as as um, as hurting as it should be to actually stop that so in the end we can once we get a lead we can pretty much steamroll their composition yeah, you saw them actually at one point try and force Baron which they really at that <laughs> yeah. point should never have done um, yeah. but they felt forced into that situation which is what led to the surrender later on um, and I went for a really deep Pantheon ulti actually maybe a little bit too deep I could have waited about two two seconds more or something like that but I actually wanted to force the fight um, but you saw they were getting desperate like they couldn't close out the game they tried to siege it didn't work because they got engaged on then he tried a desperate Nasher play and it didn't work out and just kind of closed the game out from there. 
Yeah. Kerpa, I actually want to follow up on one thing that you said about um, the engages coming in waves. Uh, kind of two points. So one is, do you think that's actually a mandatory thing when you fight a poke comp, is to have more than one engage tool? And two, did you know that Curse tends to be running a lot of poke-type compositions when you're going through champs like saying, let's, let's get some other guys in here to start fights? Yeah, we did have, uh, like as a team, we found out that they've been running a lot of these these like high range poke composition types, so even like the Karma support coming in there. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, Leona works really well against it, especially if you wanna, I mean, if you look at Bunny Fufu, he's really good on Thresh, so if you take that out and you somehow get the Leona, all that's left is this this pokish type of play, unless he's gonna bring out the Alistar or the Blitzcrank. Sure. Um, but probably not, so that helps in, in that regard. Especially if you're playing against Morgana, I feel you need that secondary engage. Maybe Leona is enough and just raw damage to follow up if you don't play against a Morg, but I mean, I need I need Snoop to bait out the black shields, and then I can hopefully land uh, my ulti somewhere. Yeah. If not, then uh, then it's getting really hard if it's only Leona. So I really like stacking CC against the poke comp is just so efficient because all their members are so squishy and so weak, so and you can just take them down one by one. Okay. So then one last follow up then. Uh your game at the end of today. It's tomorrow in Europe, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, your game later today against XDG. How do you feel about that team? What, where's their strength lie? Um, coming up against them, I think X Smithy is going through a little bit of a rough patch right now. I think Mancloud had a few good games lately, like on Ziggs especially, had a, a decent game. Mm -hmm. um, but I think him and X Smithy aren't really on the same page at the moment. And I think that's one thing we can look to exploit. I think me and Pope are doing pretty good together right now. And if we can look to exploit the X Smithy and Mancloud uh, duo, then I think we might come out on top. All right, well, guys, thank you very much for your time. Congrats on your win. Of course, we'll see you later on tonight. Guys, we've got more going on. Don't go AFK. We're back in three and a half minutes. When we come back, XDG take to the rift against TSM. The North American LCS continues right after this. Here, I'm jumping here. I'm jumping yeah. here. All right. Okay, going. Turning up. Targets. Going. Trundle, 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 trundle. I'm on the Kate. Kate's snared. Kate, 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 I got cancelled somehow. I got trying to nice. Boy, 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 boy. I got flash, I flash, I flash. Stay, 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 stay. I'm stuck. Boy, 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 boy. Walking. Nice. Push, push, push. Mid, mid, mid. I should base, I should base. Here, here. Okay, with the ulti. I'm gonna base, I'm gonna base. 